Let's go quickly into how much more difficult is it to get an A plus at first year and achieve this compared to getting an excellence or an A. So it, based on the, the conversation, it looks like most of you guys are uh, NCEA. Um, so compared to getting an excellence in high school, getting an A plus in university is significantly more challenging. I really can't stress how much more challenging it is to get an A plus in first year pre-med than it is to get an excellence in year 13. So if we look at a subject like biology, which probably most, if not all of you are actually taking, biology to get an excellence in year 13 is not that difficult. It's more difficult to get a scholarship and it's much more difficult to get an outstanding scholarship. Getting an A plus for one of the core papers like BioSci 107 in first year is actually more difficult than getting an outstanding scholarship for biology. In one week of lectures, you could realistically be learning more than you covered in an entire month or more of school. I just want that to sink in for a moment because underestimating the year is doing a disservice to yourself. When you enter into the year, you are hit with information at high, high volume. The concepts are more difficult as well, but that's not really where the issue is. The issue is that you need to reach a really high level of mastery of those concepts and a lot of them simultaneously. So that means that if you are right now in high school thinking, I don't try very hard and I'm still getting excellence, you need to ask yourself, if you try hard, do you think you can get four simultaneous outstanding scholarships if you were to sit a scholarship exam in September? Or if you're at the beginning of the year, if you were to sit it in around July? Because remember, each paper, which is about as difficult as getting an outstanding scholarship in biology, or actually even harder than that, the exams for those are in the middle of the year. You don't get a full year to study it. So it's like getting beyond outstanding scholarship for a subject, but only having four months to study for it, but for three papers simultaneously. So that is kind of to calibrate you in terms of the level of difficulty. So it shouldn't be underestimated. Most students will go into it underestimating it. I do these seminars and talks, you know, multiple times a year, every single year. And whenever I say this, a lot of people are like, oh, whatever, like it's just, you know, it's just to kind of like make us scared, but I don't, there's no benefit to thinking like that really, because if you underestimate it, you're going to realize the reality as soon as you go into it. And then you're just going to regret that. Uh, whereas if you overestimate it, at least you can actually put yourself in a mindset where you can prepare to do something about that and maybe change the outcome, which if I were in your position, I, I think that I would much rather that and at least the opportunity to improve. So that's kind of where I'm coming from is that if you clearly understand the mark that needs to be set for yourself, then you can work towards achieving it. And the weird thing is that actually most of you watching right now can probably achieve that. And that's the weirdest thing is that when you're in high school, you're so used to operating at kind of like a low level of your potential. And you might be trying really hard, but when you really push yourself and when the standard that's expected of you is a lot higher and everyone around you is kind of performing at that standard, you will be able to kind of bring out more and sort of unlock a little bit more of yourself to achieve that. Having said that, the percentage of students of the one and a half thousand, two thousand students entering into medical school that are in actually, sorry, that are trying to enter medical school, that actually enter into medical school is only around 10%. So only around 10% of students are actually successful at entering into medical school. And this is the same at Otago and versus Auckland. At, at Otago, the, the number is slightly higher, but it, it's basically um, negligible difference. And you guys were talking about rank score before, the rank score you need is basically at an excellence level. It's like a little bit below excellence. So you're competing against one and a half to 2,000 excellence achievers and only 10% of those 
are able to enter into medical school successfully. So that's that's the reality. Now, the thing is, what I'm saying is don't just give up hope. So I work with students from year 12 and year 13 and, and pre-med as well. Consistently, consistently, if you are achieving an easy merit and if you're hovering on the excellence border or if you're even achieving at an easy excellence level right now, you can achieve triple, quadruple A pluses. It's possible if you have the right technique, if you do the right level of preparation, if you kind of sort yourself out in the right ways. I'm gonna be going through exactly, that's a step-by-step part. I'm gonna be telling you exactly what you should be doing right now to sort yourself out such that when you enter into pre-med first year, you can safely and confidently get those A pluses. The only requirement is that you need to be kind of at least at an easy merit level achievement. If you're not currently achieving at an easy merit level and you're in year 13, it may be very difficult for you to get to that level. You'll probably require some like intensive coaching to get to that level. Uh, and uh, if you are you know, even sort of below that, if you're kind of on that pass fail boundary, then it's probably not gonna be very viable unless you're like in year 11 or something and you've got like a couple of years to work on it, in which case it's, it's completely doable. So, um, I'll just flick through the comments really quickly to see if I missed anything. So it just seems like people saying that they're a little bit nervous, but yeah, like I'm saying, you know, you don't actually have to be, you don't have to be that nervous. You need to be realistic because whether you decide to, believe it or know it or not, it doesn't change the fact that's the reality. You know, when you enter into your first year, that's the standard that you're going to have to meet. It, it always is. So what you choose to do with this information, it, you know, it's it's not it's not going to change the fact that that's the standard you will have to meet. But what I'm saying is that you can actually bring yourself to the point where you can achieve that. 